something to improve the health of this engine. And hose this bad boy down. It's not exactly pretty and it's not exactly right. Oh, that doesn't work at all. I'm trying to take him on a walk. We have some exciting news. I told you it was going to be awesome. <laughs> Welcome back to Retro Revivals. Hope you guys saw the first couple of videos where we brought the RV home and we started the demolition. So this coming week in Michigan, it is going to be cold and rainy. We have a few projects that we can do indoors to help get us further along. I plan to pressure wash the engine in the camper. I also uh, have some gaskets I want to replace and I would like to paint the valve covers and the top of the motor. So I've got my work cut out for me. Christy, what do you have? <laughs> Yeah, so when we were doing the demo, we pulled the front seats out of the RV, um, the oven, the vent hood. So I'm going to work on seeing if those things still work, if, if they can be cleaned up and reused when we put the uh, camper back together. We have some ideas of some modern updates that we'd like to do when we end up reconstructing. Uh, but we do also want to keep a lot of these retro elements um, and pieces if we can. So as much as we can reuse, we're going to try to put back into use. All right, I'm back out in the garage today. Hopefully tackle these seats, see if we can get those cleaned up. The plan is gonna to be to actually spray them down and soak the material with vinegar. And then as that's drying, kind of sprinkle it with baking soda. And hopefully any odors that are left in here will be pulled out as that dries. All right, we're back. It's been about 15 minutes since we sprayed the chairs. And the next step is to sprinkle with baking soda. Um, I had my helper here. And the site that I was looking at that was talking about how to deodorize upholstered furniture um, actually said you don't have to use a sifter or anything like that. But I thought that sounded more fun and might do a more even coat. So um, we have this. It was actually some previous owners left it in the house we used to have. So we've had this cute little sifter ever since. So we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. You ready? Right, put in like oh shoot, that doesn't work. Oh, that doesn't work at all. <laughs> all right, so the sifter idea the, the mesh is too big. The baking soda just runs right through. So we're not gonna use the sifter. All right, so we need to just um, sprinkle it. You wanna sprinkle? Yes. Get your crack. Good? Great. All right, so we'll come back in a couple hours and try to vacuum this up. What's going on here? I'm trying to take him on a walk. He's scared though. Hey, Milo, you gonna go on a walk? He's gonna check out what's in the garage. All right, have fun. We're putting all this time and effort into uh, the house part of the camper, we also need to uh, ensure that the engine is going to be reliable. What I wound up doing was getting a compression tester in order to verify what kind of health of the uh, engine we have here. So you can see I've got a dome light that's working, so that's something cool. Um, also, the Cobra CB is working. So anyway, we're going to go with, uh, ahead with this compression test and we'll see what we find out. They say that 100 pounds of compression is a minimum um, per cylinder and then that you want to be within 10% range of each cylinder. So anyway, this is my diagram. This is what I came up with. 
as far as pressure you can see four and six over there at 70 and 90 respectively are down um, I'm going to put the pressure tester back on there real quick and I'm going to crank it over. I'll show you how slowly it's cranking and then I will re-verify that it is the same pressures and then we'll go from there. Okay, so wide open throttle, cranking. Ninety. So that was, uh, yeah, that's cylinder number six um, I was getting 90 before I'm getting 90 now I'm gonna move it over to uh, cylinder number four I was getting 70 and we'll just re-verify that uh, it's doing the same thing again all right there's your tester all right, so this is cylinder number four. Throttle's wide open, cranking. Like 70. 70. 70, yeah, yeah. right. Okay. I didn't know what those little lines meant. I had to count it out. <laughs> so yeah, 70 on that one. Yeah. I don't know exactly where to go with my two cylinders. Maybe it needs a valve job. Um, the lifters were uh, getting a little noisy on the drive home a few days ago. Maybe the lifters um, will, would affect that, I'm not even sure. Um, so anyway, I am trying to consider my options here, but I do believe that I need to do something to improve the health of this engine. Okay, got these oven parts cleaned up pretty well. Um, going to need some paint here on these, but before we started painting, I also wanted to paint the inside of this range. Um, just wanted to check to see if it'll work. So we've got the propane connected, took it off the grill, and we're going to see if we can get this oven to work. All right. So we push that. Come on, baby. All right, so that works. We tested the burners the other day, so I feel like we're good to paint some of this stuff up. Probably should try to bake something. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> Apple pie. All right, so we're going to give this oven a real test. What do you have here? Uh, mini pizzas. Mini pizzas. We have it set to 375, so no handle. we got to put that back on because that door is hot. You want to set it there on the shelf? So we're going to see if this works. So it said 12 to 16 minutes. It's been 12. Let's check these out. They're cooking. Ooh, that door is hot. Woo! That door is hot. I think they need a couple more minutes. All right, so it's been 16 minutes. Let's see how these look. Nice. It's cooked. This is the first time we've cooked in our garage. Oh. Yep, can you grab it? The flame lit suddenly. It scared me. Oh, yeah, they look good. Let's see. Nice. All right, bon appetit into the camper try to move it to some drier ground so I could do an oil change um, so that didn't go according to plan um, I got it started uh, just did a quick walk around make sure everything was okay and out of my way so I could move it sit back down no oil pressure I look at the gauge it's reading zero so I don't know what happened what I'm gonna try is to remove the valve cover at least off of one side of the engine to verify that it is pumping oil to the top of the engine. That way I could at least move it tonight to where I want to be for tomorrow. This 440, um, as I'm assuming with all 440s, has six uh, bolts in the valve cover. One at each end, two on top, and two on the bottom. So I am going to remove those. 
um, just off of the one side just to make sure again that the oil pump is providing pressure and getting oil to the top of the engine and then we will hopefully be able to move it. You gotta love these old engines. They practically take themselves apart. Uh, that's not such a good thing actually. The uh, Over time things rattle loose and um, so all the uh, valve cover bolts were essentially finger tight which leads to leaks. That's why you get oil drips here and there. Um, one of the reasons anyway. So I've got the valve cover bolts out on the one side. I'm gonna pull the valve cover and we will see what it looks like. All right, valve cover off. I am pleasantly surprised at how clean it is underneath the valve cover. It's a big relief, honestly. I, I'm not seeing a whole lot of sludge. Maintenance is always a question whenever you're buying a used vehicle, especially one that's 47 years old. It does look like it's been making oil pressure. You can see that oil puddled here at the back of the, um, the cylinder head, and it's already leaked down onto my exhaust manifold and down on my exhaust pipe down there. So... What that means is the next time I start this thing, it is going to be a smoky mess. Let the smoke show begin. I wasn't lying. Told you it was gonna be awesome. <laughs> Just a little bit of a haze. It helps keep the bugs down. All right, getting ready to vacuum these chairs, see if we can get this baking soda off. One of the things I noticed is on this chair i think was the passenger seat there is just a ton of cat hair i don't know if you can see it but um i'm gonna vacuum it and then hit it with one of these things see if i can get that hair off All right, so as you can see, there's been some critters uh, doing their thing up underneath the uh, the hood here um, on top of the engine. I'm going to go ahead and pressure wash the uh, engine and uh, at least the top side of the transmission off before I do my oil change and take the valve covers off and the exhaust manifolds and dig any further into the engine. Kind of want a clean surface to start with. 
or at least as clean as uh, reasonably possible. We're sitting inside the camper. Uh, underneath the doghouse here is the rest of the engine. What we will wind up doing is putting plastic over top of the carburetor here. That way we don't get water down there. And then for the most part, I'm just gonna put plastic around the outside edge here and kind of up over the dash. And then I'm gonna bring the pressure washer wand in here and hose this bad boy down. Um, so there we go. All right, we're just finishing up the tape job here. So this is what we've come up with. Um, it's not exactly pretty and it's not exactly right, but it should keep most of the water from splashing around the immediate cab area and just hopefully running out the bottom here. I've got my pressure washer. I've started spraying the engine down with degreaser. Let me show you what's going on. Keeping this plastic on stuff will keep the water from getting into the motor or the, uh, the electrical components, which can um, be a big problem when you go to restart the camper. My carburetor shower cap keeps getting blown off. You can see it's made a big difference. Um, I actually uh, started pressure washing a little earlier and didn't realize that I had used it in the record button. So um, a lot of that grease and grime is gone. The, uh, what is left there is just exposed uh, metal and a little bit of paint. The plastic caught most of it, but uh, there's quite a bit of pressure coming out of that washer. All right, so you'll never guess, but it's raining again. Um, we had decided we weren't going to buy an RV to do a project until we had a barn or a, a large garage to work in, but um, we don't have that and we couldn't pass up on this deal, so here we are. Um, <laughs> trying to find some projects that we can do indoors. So we're at O'Reilly's and you're gonna get some paint. Just bought some engine paint, some Chrysler Corporate Blue to match the uh, the factory um, 1976 440 color that it had. That is blue. Holy smokes. Alright, got the oven all cleaned up. Looking good. It works. The stove top works. Got the vent fan shiny. To get a new one of these things, but we'll be good to go there. And then these seats are looking good. They even smell good. Ready to go back in the camper. Okay, so I painted the valve covers off the engine. Now I'm going to spray the intake on the engine. I'm going to use a little bit of cardboard to try to keep the overspray to a minimum. All right, so as I'm doing this, I'm not too worried about the hoses. Um, I'm gonna be replacing those, so I just wanna to try to get my paint in here.
Whoever said painting and videoing was easy, not telling the truth. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. All in all, it turned out pretty good. So we're done with the intake, and hopefully we're done with the painting. Um, had a few minor setbacks, but the intake is drying now, so I'm gonna go get the valve covers and gaskets and put those on. Okay, so I've replaced the valve cover gaskets, painted the valve covers and intake, and now all I have to do is rebuild the carburetor and put it all back together. All right, we're back. We had some pretty torrential downpours today, but the forecast for the next few days looks good. And we have some exciting news. We got some lumber. So hopefully next time you see us, we will be getting ready to build a wall. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Stop video. I don't know if you can do that. <laughs> Dang it.